If you missed it, we made a video back last June about H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori, explaining what it is, going super in depth. It's basically a bacteria that overgrows in the stomach under fairly unknown circumstances, what I like to call dysbiotic conditions. You know, your gut's messed up. Worst case scenario, causing stomach ulcers, leading to stomach cancer, but the symptoms and how you physically feel are sometimes confused with things like candida, SIBO, parasites. When you can't eat a lot of foods, you feel like you're throwing stuff up, you have acid reflux, you're not sleeping, insomnia. And one of my viewers actually sent me an email a little while ago about H. pylori being caused by vitamin C deficiency. I couldn't find that email, but I did look into a few studies and I think it's possible. The broader hypothesis being that certain bacteria are acting in a protective manner to ensure your body is getting certain nutrients. I would imagine the H. pylori is trying to digest some of your food for you, increasing the antiscorbutic value to reduce the amount of vitamin C your body needs. So is vitamin C deficiency one of the main causes of H. pylori or is H. pylori working in a protective capacity? And the reason I don't think that you know, vitamin C causes a compromised immune system so that H. pylori can proliferate is because in that previous video we made on H. pylori, uh, the Sardinian shepherds had it in their stomach and were living just fine, perfectly healthy. So it's definitely supposed to be there. It's a normal part of the gut microbiome that gets a little out of whack. So the first study we have is effects of high dose vitamin C treatment on Helicobacter pylori infection and total vitamin C concentration in gastric juice. In this study, they measured the vitamin C content of the stomach acid and found it to be lower than average in people with H. pylori. In vitro vitamin C has been shown to inhibit growth of H. pylori, meaning in a test tube, if they mix H. pylori with vitamin C, the growth is impaired. They had two test groups, one receiving antacids for four weeks, which is the typical medical treatment protocol from regular doctors, the other group receiving five grams of vitamin C daily for the same four weeks. H. pylori infection remained unchanged in the first group, while 30% of patients in the second group eradicated their H. pylori infection. Incredibly difficult to do. You know, people take rounds and rounds and rounds of antibiotics and it doesn't work. Gastric juice vitamin C concentration rose less in the other 70%. So the people that didn't get their H. pylori cured, which were taking vitamin C, you know, maybe they needed more, maybe it wasn't a vitamin C deficiency that was causing the H. pylori. Second study is vitamin C and Helicobacter pylori infection, current knowledge and future prospects. So the study states it's pretty well known in medical literature that ascorbic acid, aka vitamin C deficiency, is connected with gastritis and other stomach issues. Notable information from this research is that absorption of vitamin C can become greatly impaired in a state of disease. So when normal doses of 200 milligrams to 300 milligrams of vitamin C are more in line with what's normal, when that's administered, it has little to no effect. With reduced absorption and bioavailability of vitamin C in certain disease states, it may be necessary to increase dosage of vitamin C or administer synergistic nutrients that may be impairing absorption. Uh, the study didn't say uh, the latter part. They just found out that the lower dose of vitamin C wasn't working and they hypothesized that maybe the H. pylori is inhibiting those things. Number three, vitamin C, a preventative therapeutic agent against Helicobacter pylori. Working as a biological antioxidant, Vitamin C can eliminate free radicals as well as boost your immune system as the immune cells require large amounts of vitamin C. Hypothetically, if you have a stronger immune system, then H. pylori might not be able to proliferate in the first place. Since vitamin C inhibits certain enzymes in H. pylori, it reduces the ability to survive in an acidic environment of the stomach. That's also why probably in the first study, they found in the test tubes that vitamin C was inhibiting H. pyloric growth. It has an effect on one of the enzymes that H. pylori uses. Vitamin C is also the most important vitamin for collagen synthesis in the body. The stomach lining requiring a certain type of collagen. If the stomach lining is compromised, then H. pylori can penetrate 
and establish itself better. So hypothetically, when people have H. pylori in their stomach and the walls are thick, it's just kind of chilling there with the food and goes through. If H. pylori can establish itself in the gut lining and you know reproduce easier, protect itself from the stomach acid, prevent itself from going through the small intestine and being excreted in the bowels, then you, it can overgrow and you have some issues. Last, but actually least, serum level of some micronutrients in children infected with Helicobacter pylori, and very simply, H. pylori significantly reduces zinc, vitamin C, and B12. So from these studies, we have enough information to justify at least trying some sort of vitamin C protocol. Now there might be deficiencies in other nutrients as well, but those aren't as heavily correlated to H. pylori infection. Antibiotics and modern treatments typically eradicate H. pylori only for it to return or for the person to get other stomach issues. So we really want some type of holistic root cause approach of fixing vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Because in many cases, yeah, you didn't feel so good with H. pylori and the antibiotics got rid of it, but then the dysbiosis, the SIBO, the fungal infections that come back after those antibiotics make you feel worse than the H. pylori ever did. In the previous video we did on H. pylori, my suggestion was to use mastic gum as an antimicrobial, which is more effective than vitamin C in comparative studies, but the mastic gum might just be a better preventative as opposed to the end solution. That being said, having some vitamin C lemon juice mixed with ascorbic acid plus mastic gum in the morning would be a great protocol for a few weeks combined with water kefir and mastic gum again with your meals, you should see near instantaneous relief in your digestive systems if H. pylori happened to be what your issue was. So the main system I get from H. pylori is heart palpitations. So I can tell like if I'm eating too much food, if I'm not really living healthy, sleeping enough, then I might start getting some heart palpitations. But the vitamin C and the mastic gum, it's really a balance of everything, but uh, I think vitamin C deficiency is something a lot of people, especially coming from the carnivore diet, have overlooked. You know, people say you don't really need vitamin C. I'm not sure how common mega dosing is. And I do know that a lot of people do take vitamin C on a consistent basis, but their diets definitely aren't healthy enough, which means the antiscorbutic value isn't high enough. And they certainly don't take a high dose consistently over a long period of time to hypothetically fix that initial deficiency. And it almost makes me think that they don't want you to take a lot of vitamin C because if you Google like does the body store vitamin C, it actually says no and that you need to take it on a consistent basis in a small amount. But I mean, every tissue in the body for the most part, especially certain organs like the adrenals, the liver, will store a lot of vitamin C. We know in animal studies that animal organs store a lot of vitamin C. So. Uh, that's that. Uh, I didn't really want to make a video today. I was kind of tired and exhausted, but I've been reading these studies the past few days, so I figured I would, uh, would do this for you guys. Uh, you can go to organsupplements.com. We have the mastic gum available. You just, you know, you guys have seen me do it in the day of eatings a lot. Just have a teaspoon with the meals. And on Frankie's freerangefoods.com, we have water kefir grains as well as water kefir. I have videos on all of that stuff, guys. And there's plenty of other interesting products that I have videos on as well if you want to check out the website. Uh, always forget, I'm wearing my Wi-Fi shielding tank top under this t-shirt to protect my organs and systems from all of the modern Wi-Fi radiation devices we have. That is another important factor in feeling good and really fixing your digestive health. And that's the theme of all my businesses, guys. It's stuff I use personally that I thought was important to show other people. Uh, and really every one of those things is kind of necessary for fixing health problems for most people. So thank you guys for joining me. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave me a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I mentioned guys, you can see all of these websites on frank-stefano.com. Thanks again for joining. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll do the, uh, well actually, Maybe I'll try to do the, this protocol that I'm telling you guys about, but you have seen it before because I think I did a morning routine where I took some vitamin C in the morning, and I think in my liver detox smoothie, there's also a lot of vitamin C, so it might, might seem a little familiar to some of you guys.